What's up guys, this is iTweaks here. And today I'm gonna to be showing you a newly updated tweak called Camera Tweak 3. So if we go ahead and jump into the settings here, you can see that we have some options right here within the settings pane. So let's go ahead and tap on that. And then you can see that you do need to enable this. And then right below that you have the startup in advanced mode. So if you wanna do that, then you can toggle that on. Also the same thing for video camera, as well as remember the settings that you have set and remember the frames per second and dimension settings, which you can actually change inside of the camera application. And right down here, we also have active features. So if we tap on that, then you can see that we have these toggles for show dimension selector, FPS selector, horizon alignment toggle, vertical alert during filming, as well as use blur on bars. And then also, if you have any issues or you don't understand a feature completely, you can always just tap on this user manual right here and go through everything that it has. So that's really nice. And it has four sections. You have the photo camera and it's gonna tell you everything that it does some of which you can actually already do with the iOS 8 camera application by itself. So this isn't necessarily as a big of an upgrade as it was when this was initially released with the original camera tweak. But now with camera tweak 3 versus the iOS 8 camera, you still get a few uh, additions to the features. So we also have the video camera section as well as the focus ISO and shutter speed as well as composition overlays, which actually doesn't work with larger screen devices. It's only going to work for smaller screens. So let's go ahead and open up the camera application you can see right here. And you'll notice if I go into video recording mode, it actually does show me the warning right there that's saying, hey, I'm recording in portrait mode, which nobody likes and nobody should ever record in portrait mode for any reason whatsoever. But you can see right here that we have some options here. So if we tap on the little camera, when we're in video, you have advanced mode. So if we tap on that, it gives you the ability to move your white balance, which is kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can, uh, you can see a little white balance square right there. And then you also have the focus square, so you can switch that up right there. And you also have the uh, white balance lock, which you can move around right here. It's going to allow you to do just that. And then if we swipe over here, you also have exposure as well as your ISO. So if we just tap on one of these, then you can obviously swipe across. Let's go back here. So you can see when it goes from M to A, I assume that means manual to auto or from auto to manual when you mess with it a little bit. So we have auto right here. Again, if we swipe across, you can see that that's going to change the ISO or the ISO. And then we also have this little ball thing right up here. So if we tap on that, it's actually going to tell you if you're level. So if we see, just move it just a little bit, you can see that we're actually level now. This also works in landscape mode as well. So you can see once it's yellow, that means that you're level. So let's go ahead and go back here. And you can also tap on the HD. So it gives you the resolution right down here and you can change that from 144p all the way up to 1080p when you're recording a video. So not sure why you would ever want to record in 144p, but that option is there for whatever reason. Now, if you go down to 720p, that's obviously going to save you some uh, space on your device. If you need something that's not necessarily going to be something that you need in 1080p, then you can just tap on 720p, and then it's going to change right down here so you always know what resolution you're in. You can also change the frames per second. So you get this little wheel right here, and you can slide your finger all the way across right here, all the way up to 120 frames per second. Now this isn't going to allow you to do 120 frames per second in 1080p. As you can see right here, if I go ahead and tap on 1080p, it's gonna go back down to 30 frames per second. So you can see right here, even if we go up to, let's try that again. This little wheel is kinda funky. So let's just say we go to 69. If we go ahead and set that, you can see it's actually gonna change back down here to 720p. So there are some constraints there, but again, you still are going to be able to record in 120 frames per second. You can actually just swipe over like that. You don't have to swipe all the way around, but you can go up to 120 frames per second in 720p. So that's pretty cool itself. Now, if we swipe over here to photo, you're gonna have pretty much the exact same options here. You still have the, uh, the advanced mode, you have a timer, which we already have in the iOS 8 camera app, but you can actually change this up all the way up to 30 seconds, which could be a really awkward time to stand around if you're trying to take like a group photo or something. But 30 seconds is quite a long time, but again, it is there if you need it for whatever reason. Now we also have a time lapse for photos. So you can see right here that basically what this does is allow you to take pictures every five seconds. 
So you can swipe this all the way down to three seconds or even all the way up to 60 seconds. Now if you tap on this and you tap minutes, then it's obviously gonna be taking a picture every hour. So if this is just a feature that you need, I've never actually ran into a situation where I needed to take a photo, uh, you know, however many seconds, even three seconds apart. I mean, it takes it in separate modes, so it's not literally like a time-lapse video. You could put it together, take a little more work, but again, this feature is here if you wanna use that. Now, right over here, we also have the white balance mode that we can use just like we had in the uh, video format. And swiping over here, we have the exact same features. Now, right here, I was talking about that we had the composition overlays here, but you can see, it's kind of hard to see actually, just because it's white, but you can see the little outline right here. And that's basically showing you, you know, that it's not made for the iPhone 6 or the iPhone 6 Plus. This is made for a much smaller screen device just because the border, I mean, it just doesn't line up right, basically. But a really cool thing about this is you're able to change the resolution here. So we have, again, all the way down to 144p, but we can go all the way up to 2448p. So if we tap on that, then you can see it's going to change the resolution for you right there with inside the camera application, which is pretty nice. But that's about all there is to Camera Tweak 3. It's not necessarily as big as an upgrade as it was when the initial tweak was released, just because we've gotten a lot of features within the iOS 8 camera application ever since iOS 8 has came out. So let me know what you guys think about this tweak in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. And if you wanna see more of my videos about everything jailbreak and everything Apple, make sure you subscribe. All right, guys, until next time, peace.